Welcome to Keto Life Support, where we make your keto life sustainable, fun, and low stress. I'm Kim Howerton, and I'll be coming to you weekly with some of my keto besties to bring you the practical, real-world keto advice that you need. Quick disclaimer, I am not a doctor, and even if we do have a doctor in the house from time to time, he or she is not your doctor, and nothing we say on this show should be taken as medical advice. Always check in with a trusted medical professional about your own personal medical concerns. Hello, this is Kim Howerton with Keto Life Support, episode number 149. And on today's show, we're going to be talking about the wild world of at-home digestive and dietary testing. Yes, we're going to get into it a little bit. We're going to have some stories. We're going to share some facts. So let's get to episode number 149. All right, so I'm going to start with a little story. This happened years ago before I found keto, and I was searching the sun, moon, and stars for what was wrong with me and why I couldn't get a handle on my weight and my cravings and all this stuff. And I got somehow, I don't remember how, I got hooked into a very nice lady who I think she was a functional medical practitioner. You can tell this was a long time ago who said, well, if I do some dietary testing, I was going to, she's going to send me a kit. It's going to do some various tests. They're going to do some at-home blood testing and figure out my food sensitivities because it's very likely that these food sensitivities were causing me to retain weight. And also maybe some stool testing to see what my reaction to certain foods was and all these things together we're going to give me a really good picture of how I should be eating, what kinds of foods I should be avoiding. And I was like very hopeful about it. I thought it can't be that I'm just eating too much. I, well, I didn't want it to be that I was just eating too much. And I, and I thought there must be some reason I can't control myself and my cravings and my triggers. And you know, maybe I can get an answer. And I did get a lot of answers. But the question was, were they the right answers? I was left with more questions than answers at the time. And I was just confused. So I'm older, I'm wiser, I'm sassier, and um, now I want to talk to you a little bit about these kinds of tests. So ultimately, the results I got from these tests told me a list of foods that I showed sensitivity to, according to the test, and she said I should try and avoid these foods. And it was a real bummer because there were a lot of my favorite foods on that list. And I thought, oh, this explains so much. And then I thought, it does. Like, I was like, but I've legitimately never felt sick eating those foods. I'm just super confused. So let me share a little bit about it. So the kind of testing that are usually done in these at-home tests are called IgG, which is immunoglobulin. That's really hard to say, by the way, immunoglobulin. G testing, but because it's such a tongue twister, most people just say IgG. Now, IgG testing, what you'll often do, now a lot of companies do this. I didn't use Everly well. They didn't exist at the time, but that's an example. Uh, And I'm not picking on them alone. Lots of companies do this and you can get them through various sort of um, alternative medical practitioner people as well. But basically you get sent like a card with little holes in it and you prick your finger, and then you squeeze drops of blood in these little spots, and then send it off, and they test it for reactivity to various common food types. And you'll get back a report that says you reacted to this, and this, and this, and this, you reacted this much, and that much, and like, often there's like, you know, orange, red, green, you know, like degrees of reactivity. And I am here to tell you that IgG tests are, but I don't know. I was about to say bananas. That's not the right word. Bogus. Bogus is the word I was looking for. Yeah. IgG tests, not going to help you. Why is that? Well, okay. So an IgE test, the letter E, like excellent, that would be a test that an allergist would run for you to see if you're having an allergic response to a food. But what an IgG test is actually your tolerance to a food. So actually, reactivity on an IgG test means your body 
actually tolerates that food. Not that it doesn't. So here's the deal. When you eat foods, your body has a subtle reaction to them. This is sort of, you can look at it as your body's way of learning that food, knowing, like recognizing it as what it is. And it's appropriate to have a slight response to foods as your body recognizes it's not you, it's other, it's food, it's coming in. So a positive IgG response in most cases simply means your body recognizes that food. And so it's having a a response, a positive response. And by positive, I don't necessarily mean good. I just mean, it's like, oh yeah, I know that guy. And so that's why for most people will say this, wow, it turned up so many foods that I eat all the time. And people will say, oh, yeah, see, you know, you eat a certain food too much and your body starts to develop resistance to it because you eat it too much and yada, yada, yada. BS, just BS. Like IgG is not a test that anyone should rely on. I'm not saying food intolerances don't exist. I absolutely am not saying that. What I'm saying is the IgG test is basically useless. So don't pay any attention to that. Please don't give somebody, I think it cost me like $300 to do this. Not a good idea. Anyway, there's a very well-respected immunologist named Dave Stutkas, MD, S-T-U-K-A-S, is a pediatric allergist and immunologist. And he's a very smart man around these. And he will back up my point of view. I've listened to him quite a bit as well on this topic that the IgG test is totally not worth it. The IgE tests, which are done in clinic with a MD allergist, can be a useful test, actually. And those detect frank allergies. Now, you might have a mild allergy or a significant allergy, but generally these types of tests are run in clinic because if there's a suspected allergy, they don't want to do these tests without a lot of safety measures around it. So here's the deal, though. He even says that with the IgE tests, which are good tests, they're actually helpful tests in many cases, they still turn in a ton of false positives. And because of that, even these good tests shouldn't be somebody's first line of defense when trying to look at food intolerances. You should look at symptoms and responses. If you're truly having a response to a food, you'll have a response to the food. You'll have a reaction. Now, what he tends to suggest is a food elimination diet and then a careful food reintroduction period. So that is something you can do at home if you don't have a true allergy. Please do not reintroduce like shellfish. If the last time you ate shellfish, your throat will close. Don't do that. But if you're just like, I don't know that I feel so well after I eat eggs, you know, that's different. If you're really having like hives, like a true allergic reaction, please see an MD and get some allergy testing with them. But if you're just trying to work out possible intolerances, don't get the IgG tests do a food removal and then reintroduction and you'll have the best knowledge then about whether or not you should be eating that food. So yeah, don't bother with IgG. And let's talk about microbiome testing. So microbiome testing, they say, you know, hey, send us some of your poop, right? Send us a stool sample and we will test how well you're digesting food, we'll be able to tell you what you should be eating. You know, we can say, oh, you're meant to be on a plant-based diet. You're meant to be on a carnivore diet, yeah, yada, 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 based on your microbiome. And I just want to say that while there is some promising research around microbiome testing, it is like at least one to two decades off from being actually actionable information. They can tell you if you have like a, a pathogen or something fungal, right? Something that is actually causing a real issue. But beyond that, it's very much like, to borrow a phrase from Dr. Tommy Wood, who is a very smart man about these things, it's kind of like reading tea leaves. They're just like, we think it's this. And, you know, one day it might look like one thing, another day it might look like another thing. 
they've actually taken not to be too graphic, but they've taken a stool sample and taken like different portions of it and ran the same tests on it. And they all came back different. So it's not reliable. It's not repeatable. And it's not something that I would do for any information about how or what you should be eating based on these results. Eventually, maybe they will be able to do that. Absolutely. But they can't do it now. So if you're listening to this in 2023, probably through 2000 and maybe 33, 34, you know, probably not there yet unless some incredible breakthrough comes. And if some incredible breakthrough comes, I will update this episode. So neither microbiome testing nor at-home food intolerance testing should not be done. Will you, if you send in your stuff, get some responses where they'll feed you some nonsense about how you should be eating? Yes, they will do that. But that doesn't mean that it means anything. So I'm just going to come out right here and say that while I am a big supporter of testing, I co-wrote a book on blood testing with Dr. Ken Berry, right? I think that we should get things checked on. We should look at lab tests. Absolutely. But we should make sure that the lab tests we're looking at actually are going to deliver useful, actionable, believable, reproducible information. And so I'm just coming out in team, don't waste your money on these specific tests. So I'm sure some people are going to be mad that I'm against these things. You know, I mean, what's the harm, you might say? beyond the wasted money. I mean, if you want to waste your money, go ahead. I have wasted a lot of money in my life. I just went to Sephora. I mean, I probably spent the equivalent of an IgG test while there. So, you know, it's your money. You do what you want with it. What I'm more worried about is that it'll tell you things about how you should be eating that make an already challenging eating situation, right? If you're like, I don't think I'm well, And now it's telling you not to eat some of your favorite foods that work within your diet profile that help your blood sugar stay stable, you know, that you would really enjoy. I mean, I just think it's a recipe, no pun intended, for food disaster, because now what are you going to eat? It just gets more limited and more limited and gives people anxiety. And you know what anxiety gives you? A stomach ache. So I just think there's a lot of harm in delivering inaccurate advice or testing and pretending like it's accurate. And so I'm a no on both the food sensitivity IgG testing and on microbiome testing that says it will tell you something about the way you should eat. So that is either good news or bad news for you. And again, just to reiterate, what should you do instead? Good old fashioned, careful, targeted elimination diet. That will actually give you more, well, it would be much more likely to give you good information about what your body tolerates and doesn't tolerate. Being aware, I will say that sometimes when you reintroduce a food, you have to, again, accustomize your body to that food. And so you have to pay attention to the difference between, you know, a small reaction to it and a major reaction to it and understand what is tolerance, what is intolerance, and knowing what you're willing to experience along the way. So, you know, you want to feel good while consuming as wide a diet as you do well on. I'm not saying you should eat things that you don't agree with you. I have a lot of friends who are full carnivore because their food intolerances are such they don't do well on many other foods and they really thrive full carnivore. But even a lot of them would say, hey, if I did well, if I felt well on some other foods, I would like to include them because there's no gold star prize for having the most limited diet possible, right? Unless that limited diet is the only way that you feel well. So, you know, in my heart, being the food lover that I am, I'd like everybody to eat as wide a diet as will work for their body. And sometimes you have to do some testing 
And by testing, I mean experimenting to see what works for you. But again, don't mess around with actual food allergies. If you have, again, swelling, hives, itching, you know, any of those kind of histamine reactions, work with a doctor before you reintroduce anything. All right, guys, that's it for this week. Take care and I'll talk to you soon. Thank you so much for joining us for this episode of Keto Life Support. Want more information? Want show notes? Want to suggest a topic? Just head over to ketolifesupport.com. That's where all that kind of thing can go on. By the way, I have a request. If you could go to your podcast host and hit subscribe, we would really, really appreciate it. And what would be even more awesome is if you could write a review. And what would be even more awesome than that is if you could write like a really flattering review. Just asking, you know, you do you. All right. So thanks so much for joining us. I'm thrilled that you're part of the Keto fam. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.